Hi guys, Samantha from Do Some Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you a cool crackle technique that I've been working on for a few weeks now and it's going to be using a new crackle medium. So here is what it's called, it's Deco Art Perfect Crackle and there's two steps to it as you can see. And I've left a chip of clay with this crackle medium on it, baked and raw, um, for about two to three months and so I know that this is compatible with the polymer clay. There are a few things that you should know before we start the tutorial. So let me just go through those quickly. Um, basically it is a clear medium and it, when you run it through a pasta machine it will give you a really cool crackle. Um, it does crackle but on its own when it's drying so you can see these big cracks over here um, running through. That's where it cracks on its own and you'll see that in a little while. Um, but the crackles are clear and it has almost like a glassy effect to it. So this is what it looks like. Then you can apply alcohol inks to it like I have over here and it looks really nice. The alcohol inks do stain the crackle but it has a different sort of staining effect than the clay underneath and so it gives a really interesting effect. And I've shown this veneer on uh, my Facebook account before and you guys really liked it. And then I baked it. And unfortunately, this uh, medium doesn't take very well to heat. So you can see that we've got a bit of bubbling here. And now that can be an advantage. You can take that and use it as a texture, but it will apply to certain projects. So I wanted to find a way to make sure that these bubbles didn't work, um, didn't come up. Um, and the only way to do that is to actually bake a piece of your... Um, veneer with a sheet of greaseproof paper over the top and then you put a ceramic tile over it so it rests and then the bubbles don't come up. So here's one where I just pop it in the oven as it is and you can see that it's kind of got that glossy effect to it but it also has some bubbles. This one I put the greaseproof paper over the top it's not as shiny but it's smooth and none of the bubbles came up. So if you're using this product and you don't want any bubbles, you have to be using something that you can place a tile over the top to keep those bubbles from rising. If you don't mind the bubbles, you can use it in all sorts of uh, projects that aren't flat. So um, it's just something to know because um, you don't want to be going and making a cabochon and then it starts bubbling and blistering and it doesn't look good. So this could look quite nice with something that's fairly organic. Um, so I'll probably be doing some tutorials on that. But for today, I'm going to be focusing on some flat beads where we're just going to have this sort of effect on it. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to be making a veneer like this, which is on white clay. Then I'm going to be making another veneer, which is going to be on pearl white clay. And that's the one that I'm going to get started. So... Let's start with step one. I'll open the lid, the bottle. And now I've got these little gloves on because I like to spread this medium with my fingers rather than a brush. And that's just personal preference. You can use a brush, um, but I like to spread it with my fingers because it's a lot faster. I can get a more even coat and it means I don't have to wash a brush because I like to keep my brushes nice for things like mica powders. Okay, and this is step one and you need to apply both steps. So once you've applied step one, it needs to dry completely before you can apply step two. Okay, and I'm just busy. Putting it through, and I'm trying to get it smooth ish. There we are. So that should be fine. Let me just quickly wipe my finger. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a heat gun to dry this. Set your heat gun on the lowest setting. You can use a hair dryer for this as well. Just make sure that it's not so hot that it's going to cure your clay. If it's going to cure your clay, um, then you shouldn't do it because. Well, you don't want your clay curing. It's just supposed to be a nice warm wind that will help dry this faster. 
or if you have the patience you can go and you can just wait about two hours or so for this to dry completely but you have to wait for it to dry before you can apply part two so I've set this on my lowest setting as you can see and I'm going to put my lowest wind speed and I'm just going to dry this There we go, so I've been drying that for around 5 minutes and now it's basically cured. You should be able to run your finger over it with no tackiness. It's a little bit of a spot over there that's a little bit tacky on the edge, but that's fine. There, so that's just fine. Okay, now I'll bring over part 2 and I'll just open that up and this is the part that's going to crackle. And now this dries pretty quickly. So you've got to work fast. Okay, and depending on how thick or thin you smear this part is going to dictate how thin or thick your crackles will be when it dries. But don't worry too much about it because we're going to put this piece of clay through the pasta machine and so if you're not happy with the crackles when it dries, which I'm often not because I like nice tiny crackles and large crackles at the same time and this is designed for paper so often it doesn't have the right size crackles for my liking. So just let it dry and that takes overnight. You need to leave it at least 12 hours before you can start messing with it. Um, and then you should see that it has crackled just a little bit. The edges will start to crackle as it dries. Uh, but definitely leave it overnight, it will mean that it's nice and dry on the clay and will make crackling a lot easier. If you hurry and dry it with the heat gun, the top will cure, but the bottom won't. So when you run it through a pasta machine, you'll get these really sticky edges. And just, it's much better to wait at least 12 hours before you mess with it. And so I'll leave this about 12 hours. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. The moment that I'm just going to pick that up, and you can see it's quite wet. Put that in a place where it's not going to be in your way, it's not going to get dust or anything like that. And then just leave it. You'll see that the edges of the clay do start to curl up as it goes. And then when it's dried, we'll create a piece like this. So, in the meantime, while we are waiting for that to dry, I am going to uh, add alcohol inks to this piece. Now this piece is going to be different from the purple one that I've made. I'm going to be using different alcohol inks. For the purple one that I showed you before, I used amethyst, sadwood blue, and teakwood. For this one, I'm going to be using latte, eggplant, and denim. Okay, and I'm just going to pop a few drops on, okay, and then again I like to use my finger, um, I've taken off those little finger cot things because this I can wash off quite easily. And now I like the denim because, well this can be a disadvantage or an advantage depending on what project you do. Um, it doesn't stay one colour. It has a purpley sort of effect. So the blues that are on the warm colour scheme, where they, on the colour side, where they have a little bit more of a purple tint rather than a green tint, um, they tend to split. So you can see that there's a little bit of purple in here. So you need to be careful of these. If you don't want the colour splitting, go for the more cool blues rather than the warm blues. But in this case, I do want it to split because it creates a really interesting effect. But you need to know that before you start the project, otherwise it can be really unpredictable and it can actually ruin a few things. I've had a few projects where that happened in the beginning when I didn't know it did it. There, now I'm using the eggplant. And I'm just crossing the colours over. It's supposed to be a real mess of different colours. 
And now our base is going to be formed by the purple and the blue. And the latter is going to be the really interesting colour that comes on later. And so I'm just going to spread this colour all around. And if I have an area that still has white in it, I'll add some more ink. So I want to add a bit more of the ink there. And there. And this is going to be similar but different to the other one that I made because we're going to be using both of them in the same necklace. And now another way to hide those bubbles if you do have them and it is on a flat surface uh, you can use resin. Resin works pretty well but you still will get the texture of those bumps. So this new crackle that I've been testing out um, the medium that I'm testing out. It's completely new to me. This is the first technique that I have tried and it works out pretty well. You guys really liked it so I'm busy getting a tutorial out. But I'm pretty sure there's lots of cool things I can do with this uh, new mixed media. So I will be doing quite a few videos in the future as I discover new things with it. So you can look forward to that. And if you guys try out this new crackle medium and you find some really cool things that you would like to share, please do let me know, as it is helpful to me if you find something that doesn't work with it Saves Me Clay. Uh, if you find something that does work, that's really interesting to me and I will explore it. So please do share anything that you do know. Okay, so I'm almost done. Just busy making sure I get a good cover. I want the clay to stain. It's really important that this clay is quite thoroughly stained. Right. Now I'm going to bring out the latte. And always open it away from your clay because the, the um, alcohol inks can crumble. I'll just drop a little bit there. And dab that around. And make sure it's small drops. You don't want to add too much. And that's looking pretty dark at the moment. Don't worry, we're going to do something to lighten that up in just a moment. That will make it look really cool and interesting. Just, you need to add all your alcohol inks before you do the next step because it needs to soak into the clay. There. Put that off to the side. And we're going to use 99% alcohol, as you can see. And this is this does work best, but you can get the 91% for this. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the 99%. Just give a good spray and let it sit there so it's going to lift up any alcohol like that hasn't soaked into the clay. And this is why I let it sit for a little while. Take a wet wipe, something that will soak up the liquid and gently smooth it over the surface and lift. Spray again and however many times you spray is completely up to you. The more you spray and the more you lift the lighter it will get. So I generally like to do it around twice. We'll see. Yeah, so I will do it about twice. That's plenty for me. Okay, so that's a really interesting piece. And they're kind of similar, but different at the same time. And you can see the areas where... And this is what's interesting about the denim. It contains this kind of pinkish, purplish colour, but it also contains a blue. So depending on um, what surface you're using, the different mediums will pick up the different colours. So the clay will pick up the blue ink and it will the purple side of it will get lifted. But this crackle medium that we're using here will soak in the purple and the blue will get lifted. So you can see this was where a piece of denim was sprayed. 
but the crackle's really distinctive there because it picked up on the purple rather than the blue that the clay picked up. So it's really interesting and something nice to play around with. Okay, now I'm just going to pick this up. And I want to run it through my pasta machine on my fourth setting, which is my middle setting. Okay, and that's how it looks. Then I'm going to take it down one setting to my third setting and run it through again. Yeah, and you can see it was starting to get some white bits exposed. I'm going to flip it because I rolled from this side to this side. Now I'm going to flip it so I roll from the side to the side down on my second thinnest setting. Okay, and that's as far as I'm going to go. And you can see it, we get a really interesting pattern. Now some areas are going to have more white than others. That's what I like about this, it's quite unpredictable. But there we go, we've got two pieces that somewhat match and we'll have those in the same necklace. And then in about 12 hours time, when that other piece is dried, we'll make something with that. Okay, so this has been curing for roughly around 12 hours. And so hopefully if I pick it up and shine it, you can see that the crackle has cracked on its own. But we also want to assist it in creating larger cracks. So, this sheet of clay was run out on my thickest setting. I'm now going to run it through my thickest setting again. And you can see immediately what a difference that makes. And I ran it through from this side to this side. Now I'm going to flip and run it from this side to this side, down through my second thickest setting. Yeah, and here's what it looks like. And don't worry about little bits of the pasta machine that can easily be fixed. And it's actually little bits of alcohol ink from our last um, sheet that we ran through. There you go. But don't worry, this actually will get covered up when we put the alcohol inks later. So I'm fairly happy with that. If I see any pieces that I think need a bit more of a crackle, I'll just go and crack them by hand. There's a little piece there, maybe one or two down there. But I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now I'm going to be using amethyst, sailboat blue, and teakwood. And I'm going to start the sailboat blue. It's just the same as last time. Now I've made a few design changes because I've had a little bit of time to think about it and I've decided that instead of make, putting the two sheets that I've shown you together I'm going to be making two separate necklaces both with a completely different style from each other and I think that will be fun and I think it will be more effective as well. Because that other sheet didn't turn out exactly the way I thought it would because of the um, colours changing and things like that. And so I think they'll actually look better separate. So I've designed a few designs that I think will look quite nice. Okay, so I'm just busy. Smoothing this ink on. Should be plenty of purple. Then I'll bring over the teak wood, and this I'm going to use sparingly because it's quite a strong colour. It's nice, but you don't want to be using it. You don't be using too much of it. I'll just drip a little bit on my finger from the side down here. I think that's good. Maybe just a few more spots like here and in the corner over here. There we are. 
that's good. Okay, now in the space of time that it's going to take me to grab a wet wipe, that alcohol ink is going to be soaked in quite nicely. Okay, and just check that you've got all the areas. If you see white, which I do see over there, I'm just going to quickly dab there and I see a little bit of white there. Um, just take care of it because you don't want white areas. Area. Okay. Now I'll grab my 99% alcohol. Give this a real good spray. So it lifts up that alcohol. And I'll bring over the wet wipe. Pop over the top. completely happy with it like I think this is a little light for my liking and I think that's because I didn't put enough alcohol ink on you can always go back and add your alcohol ink again and have a second try that works perfectly fine every single time so I mean it's better to end up with it being too light rather than too dark because you can always do something about being too light I'm just going to go back and add a little bit more. Because I just think it's a little light. And this one's actually completely different from the other sheet. The other one's like really gritty. Well, this one's quite bright and colourful. bring over that brown and add that again and that should fix it up a bit and it gives you the opportunity to add some more color in different areas if you want to Now the more brown you add, the more strong it's going to be. So some areas like over there where it's a little bit lighter, it's not going to be as strong. There we are. Now I'm going to let that sit for just a little while. So it can soak in. And then we'll use our alcohol spray. So I'm just tapping it down. Alright, now I'll spray. Bring over a wet wipe. Smooth. And there we go, that's a bit better. It's quite a bit better actually. It's just that I'm not going to need to um, spray a second time. And now we are using pearl white, so it's going to be look. It's going to look different from the white, so you can expect it to look a little different, which makes it nice. Okay, so now that we've got these three sheets, I'll probably. Uh, mess around with the designs just a tad more because I don't know I always do that I always come up with different ideas after I've made the sheets um, rather than before I make the sheets all right so now I want to expose a little bit of that white to make it look really interesting so I'll run it through the setting that it was already on which is my fifth setting see that ran it through from this side to this side 
take it down one, going to flip it so it's running in the opposite direction. There you can see what it looks like. Flip it again and run through one more time. And now I'm on my third thinnest setting. There we are. And I quite like that. But again, it's quite different from the one that we made on the white. So let me bring over the other two sheets so you can see. Okay, so here are our three sheets. So here's the one that we just did now. Um, and this is the one that we did earlier. This is using the exact same inks but on pearl white as to that one. So, oh, excuse me. This one's pearl white, that one's on white, but they're using the exact same alcoholics. So depending on what clay you're using, um, if it's different, you're going to get a slightly different effect from the alcohol inks. You can see this one picked up the warm tones in the alcohol ink, while this one picked up the cooler tones in the alcohol ink. So it's completely different. So, when we do a project, we're going to be using these two together, and then we're going to use this one on its own. So that is what we're going to be doing in the next video next week. And so I do hope that this video is helpful to you. I look forward to showing you how we're going to do those projects. Leave these sheets to dry for about 12 hours before you use them because the alcohol ink needs to um, evaporate and this needs some time to dry because it's a little bit tacky after using the alcohol. So just let it sit for about 12 hours and um, it will be much better. So, that is basically it for today's tutorial, and so I do hope that was helpful to you. If it was, please do let me know, as that is always helpful to me. Uh, leave a comment on what you think of the new medium that I'm using. Um, also, let me know if you've used this before, and if you have any ideas. I always love listening to that. Let me know if you would like to see more Crackle tutorials. I can do many different Crackles on Polymer Clay, so let me know if you're interested in that. And please leave a like as that is also very helpful. And if you would like to support me in making my videos, please do become a patron. That is very helpful to me. I post exclusive videos on Patreon, colour recipes, tip tutorials, coupons for my Etsy shop, and a whole bunch of other things that I'm sure that you guys will enjoy. So if you would like to support me, that is super helpful. And I'll provide a link to that in the description below. And I will see you in next week's tutorial. Bye for now.